In this video, I'm going to explain how to graph this function here using a graphing calculator. I'm going to use the TI-84 plus Silver Edition, but these steps should work for the, all of the TI-84 family of calculators and most of the TI-83 calculators too. The first thing you should always check is the mode in which your calculator is set up. The important one is function. That needs to be highlighted. You have to be in function mode. And for most algebra problems, if you have everything highlighted on the left-hand side, you're in good shape. I need to quit. That's in blue above the mode button. So you have to hit second mode. That will clear the screen. Now I go into the graphing menu by hitting the Y equals. And I have the option of putting in seven different functions. I'm just going to stick with Y1. And this is the function I want to put in. So I need to start with x cubed. Here is my variable key. As long as I'm in function mode, when I hit the variable key, it will type in an x. Now I need x cubed. So I have to hit the raise to. So that is x caret, and now I'm in the exponent. I put a 3. Be careful, you are still in the exponent. You have to arrow to the right, so now you're down on the main line. Now I can put in minus x squared. This is the minus key. This is the negative key, very different. So you have to hit minus x squared, x variable, I'm going to use this button for the x squared. Notice it typed in the x squared. I didn't have to come out of the exponent because when you hit the squared key, it puts the 2 in the exponent and then moves you down to the main line. Now, minus 14x, minus 14x, and lastly, plus 24. So x cubed minus x squared minus 14x plus 24, hit enter. And now I want to graph it. I normally start graphing in standard window. So that is 6. When you hit zoom, just hit 6, and it will automatically put it in the standard window. Negative 10 to positive 10 in the x direction, negative 10 to positive 10 in the y direction. So here's my graph. It doesn't look too bad, but notice I don't have the top of this part of the graph. There are several different ways to do that. I can hit zoom, and I could zoom out, which is 3. Notice it didn't do anything. It says zoom out about this point. Yes, that's where I want to zoom out around, so you hit enter. And it zoomed out, but notice it kind of zoomed out in both the x and the y direction. That didn't give me a very good looking graph. So I'm going to go back to zoom standard, which is 6. And I'm happy in the x direction. It's just in the y direction I'm not that happy. I'd like the graph to go up higher, but I want to keep my x coordinates the same. So what I'm going to do is go to the table of values. It's in blue above graph. So you hit second graph. And you can see you have a table of x values and your y values. And so if I scroll up a bit in the negative direction, I can see that was one of my zeros. The function was 0 when x equals negative 4. Then it went up to 40, 36. So and then it came back down again, had another 0 when x was 2, and another 0 when x was 3. So that has helped me figure out, now I can go to the window. For my graph, I'm happy with the x values, but the y values, it would help if my y max values went up to about 50. And then I should get the peak of my graph. So let me put that in, and then I can hit graph again. And now you see you have a better looking graph. You can see where the maximum is and where this minimum is. So you can play around with the window 
to get the graph to look exactly like you want. And then don't forget the table, sorry, the table of values here allows you to hunt for where the function equals zero.